Absolutely. So, hi everyone. Uh, as uh, Vitaly said, I am Dominique Lanier from the uh, University of Bayreuth, and it's my great pleasure uh, this this afternoon or this evening, depending, uh, to be chairing this session, which will be on other synchrotron facilities for high pressure research. Uh, and so, for the first four talks, I actually will be moving away from the U.S. Uh, we'll be having first uh, three talks about European synchrotrons. Uh, so first, uh, one in uh, Germany, so Petra 3, and more specifically on the PO2.2 uh, beamline, and then going to uh, to France, so ESRF, and uh, focus more on the ID, ID27 beamline, and then again, uh, Soleil Synchrotron, this time the Psyche beamline, and then going all the way back to, uh, to, to Japan, uh, Spring 8, and then finally uh, going back around to, to the US, to HPCAT at the APS. Uh, just as a reminder, don't hesitate to ask any questions if you wish, so type them either in the chat or uh, raise your hand and uh, ask them uh, afterwards. Um, with that being said, uh, the first talk will be by uh, Peter, Peter Lehrmann, as I said, from uh, uh, Petra uh, 3, that's from Germany, and his talk will be on uh, Earth Science Research at Petra 3 and 4, making optimal use of expert properties of third and future fourth generation light sources. So, Peter, please go ahead. Thank you very much, and i like to uh, thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about our Earth Science Research at Petra 3 and, and future at Petra 4 which uh, is all about making optimal use of X-ray properties at third and fourth generation sources. Um, I'll be talking mostly about the research at the extreme condition beamline and the mission of that beamline is to provide tools for high pressure and planetary research, uh, planetary physics research. Um, this is an area view of Petra 3. Um, I'd like to mention that the things that I'm going to talk about uh, are also relevant for the other extreme condition beamline at uh, Petra 3, which is the large volume press beamline with a six uh, piston ramp uh, large volume press. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you uh, listen to what I uh, like to show you uh, with respect to uh, the extreme condition beamline. Now, um, oh. Let me see that I can advance. Here we go. Um, so when preparing this talk, I, I was thinking that rather than telling you all about what we're doing already at the um, extreme condition beamline, I actually like to focus a little bit about uh, what we need to do in order to be ready for Petra 4, uh, which you know provides a huge amount of new capabilities. So here's my outline. Uh, talk a little bit about future challenges for synchrotron deck work to be addressed uh, and uh, to address open earth and, um, earth and planetary science question, um, particularly trying to go beyond the core of the earth, so exoplanet research, and then exploring hierarchical structures in both space and time, which will ultimately lead us probably to a high pressure microscope. Then I will talk a little bit about the new technical developments at the extreme condition beamline, uh, our submicron focusing and um, working with toroidal decks. And I'm also want to talk a little bit about our imaging setup and project um, with the diamond, dynamic diamond end cell. So understanding the onset of crystallization and melting. And then at the end, I uh, want to give you an outlook of what we can expect from low emitted sources such as, such as Petra 4. So the uh, smaller, smaller, smaller is the, uh, the subject here going to really high pressures. And then also looking from, uh, from micron to atomistic and seconds to megahertz under understanding hierarchies. And I'll conclude with a summary. So future challenges for synchrotron deck work. Um, so try and go about the core of the earth. Here's a uh, image and artist illustration of an exoplanet. Um, here is the Earth uh, for comparison, so five times or the Earth's mass. And you can see that uh, the pressure and temperature conditions that we are experiencing in these planets are far beyond uh, what we're actually uh, looking at in the Earth. So there is, for example, the study of uh, MGO or FEO uh, going from the B1 to the B2 structure. <clears throat> and uh, this is something that uh, you know, we like to actually explore. Uh, the tools that we've been using and, and that have been developed in the last decade 
uh, for one, the uh, double stage diamond annual cell by the uh, Tukowinskis in, uh, in Bayreuth, uh, which can reach pressures up to uh, 10 megabar. And um, then uh, alternate, alternatively, uh, there have been the development of toroidal decks um, that can go up to six megabar by the Lawrence Livermore group and um, the CAA group. Now, here are some uh, diffraction patterns of the MG uh, MGO going from the B1 to B2. This is work uh, that's in the archive at the moment uh, by Natalia Dukovinsky and collaborators. And you can see um, right away the challenge that we're facing in these types of uh, diffraction experiments. Um, you can see very clearly here the uh, B1 structure, but then um, when the B2 structure appears, there's a huge overlap with the uh, sample. So even though submicron beams are available, um, and this was done at uh, PO6 at uh, Petra, so the nanofocusing beam line. Uh, the signal from the sample is obscured by the parasitic scattering of the gasket material. So it's not enough, it's alone having a submicron beam actually is not enough. So you do need a submicron beam, but you need also a cleaner beam. So uh, potentially Gaussian tails, um, we need more flux because the sample becomes inherently smaller and smaller. Um, so we need to be able to focus more of the beam. Uh, at, uh, at the ACB, we're only focusing about 50%. Uh, and we need a better signal to noise ratio and that can be achieved by better detectors, but also um, by working with actually gasket technology. The other thing um, is uh, exploring hierarchical structures in both space and time. Um, here I'm picking the, um, the prominent example of uh, melting of iron. So this is work by Susanna Konopkova. Um, so you can use the disappearance of the diffraction and the appearance of diffuse scattering as an indicator of uh, indication for melting. Now there are other techniques that have been used, uh, not only X-ray diffraction, but also X-ray absorption spectroscopy and X-ray Merzbauer to actually determine um, the melt line of, um, of iron. Now, melting can occur incurrently um, just because of the system, but also because of temperature gradients. So the X-ray beam really probes only a very small uh, region. And um, I think it would be really great and beneficial to see the melting when it develops. So the idea here is to combine imaging and X-ray diffraction. Um, one of the prominent examples from um, just a few years ago is um, imaging actually shock compression. This was done by Andreas Schropp from uh, the, uh, uh, then the LCL at the LCLS, of, of, of course, the LCLS has much more coherence. And so um, imaging is much easier there. But um, even um, at um, the ESRF, um, the uh, uh, Leonid Dobrovinsky's group has actually tried to do uh, X-ray transmission microscopy <clears throat> Um, by uh, looking at the melting of platinum. And you can see that they see a, a change here. Right, so let's look at um, the sub-micron focusing and toroidal decks that um, we've been working on at the extreme condition beam line. So we have a standard focused beam of uh, two by two. And then the last few years, we've been uh, working on developing our submicron focus using compound reflective lenses at 25.6 keV. And we are able now to create an 800 by 800 nanometer beam, uh, but at the cost of um, losing a lot of flux because we have to actually uh, close the slits in the front end significantly to just use the coherent part of the beam. Um, this can be improved by um, uh, using uh, so-called face plates that uh, take uh, care of the operation. So when you have, when you use compact reflex lenses, then um, some of the lenses are not focusing on the, uh, on one spot, but um, they are focusing in an area. And by actually by using these uh, face plates um, here, shown here, you can actually uh, really improve the focus. And this can be seen here. Uh, again, uh, this is the horizontal focus and the intensity. Um, we are actually able to uh, increase signal to noise ratio significantly by using the face plate. And um, this is also due because we're actually able to increase the, uh, the size of the, uh, the incident beam. So at Petra 3, we can make an effort to create submicron beams. 
with a relative small tail, but still at the cost of losing flux. And this will be much better at Petra 4. Then let's look at um, how we work with uh, uh, the toroidal decks. Um, you need, of course, a focused ion beam and a micromanipulator for the samples. And um, this uh, FIP has been funded by the University of Bayreuth through a grant um, to uh, Natalia Dubrovinsky from the BMBF, the Ministry of Science, uh, Education and Science in Germany. And um, what we've been doing, and actually this is work by Wei Wei Dong, um, who's a postdoc in the OCPC pro, uh, Helmholtz project or program. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been experimenting with different uh, gasket technologies. Uh, and in particular with a uh, metallic glass that has actually creates only an amorphous uh, background. So this is, uh, you have an insert of a metallic glass and what happens is that you get very, very clean diffraction images. So the uh, parasitic scattering of the gasket completely disappears. You just have a broad background. So here is an example of iron in MGO. So here, um, Weiwei and Konstantin Lazarin, who's um, worked with uh, Weiwei on this, uh, went up to almost uh, 330 GPA. And more recently, they have also tried to um, actually contain gold in uh, neon and they went up to about 250 GPA. So it's not only important to have a small beam, but also try to reduce the parasitic scattering from the caskets. Now I wanna talk a little bit about our, about our imaging efforts. Um, these are, uh, this is a collaboration with uh, Lawrence Livermore, a high pressure group, and uh, Rachel Husband and uh, Johannes Hagemann from um, Rachel is now in, in, at HiBev, but uh, Johannes is in the uh, imaging group at uh, Petra. And uh, we've been using partially coherent propagation-based phase contrast imaging in the uh, dynamic diamond angle cell. And we've been uh, exploring two types of uh, setups. Uh, one, we've used the unfocused beam to actually um, uh, image uh, the sample and um, then at the same time collect uh, diffraction images on our fast uh, X-ray diffraction detectors, uh, they're called lambdas. Uh, and then we've also focused the beam before the sample and illuminated the uh, uh, sample with the unfocused, uh, with the expanding beam. Um, this has allowed us actually to maximize the flux, which is uh, important for time-resolved studies. Um, this is how the setup looks. Um, here are the two detectors and here's the imaging system in front of it. I wanna show you one example. Uh, we've been at this for actually quite some time. Um, this is the uh, melting of um, gallium. Here's a phase diagram of ga uh, gallium. The temperature is a function of pressure and we're going across this um, phase boundary here from gallium one into the liquid. And when I start this, let's hope it starts. Uh, you can actually see here, this is a diffraction from the gallium. And then you have actually the diffraction disappearing and the diffuse scattering appearing. Um, so this is really, um, you know, so I think this is actually very eye-opening because you can see that um, way before the uh, diffraction disappears or the diffuse scattering appears, you can actually see already melting uh, appearing. So the disappearance of diffraction peaks or diffuse scattering are not necessarily the best indicator from, from my point of view uh, for the onset of melting. Okay, so now um, let's talk a little bit about the update of um, uh, Petra 3. Um, uh, so we've been, um, which we think is an actually ultimate 3D microscope, uh, both in, uh, in spatial resolution, but also in time. Um, we've been working on the CDR um, that was completed in 2019, and we're now working on the, whoops, on the TDR. So we're right here in this, that should take us to uh, 2020. Um, 2022, and um, we're expecting to go down uh, in 2024 and then have a two year shutdown before we come back up at the end of 2026. Um, the lattice uh, for Petra 4 is still under um, development. Right now, the machine group is actually working on a hybrid six band acromat. Um, here, uh, we're actually having two types of um, uh, timing modes. We have a high brightness mode with like 480 bunches and then a timing mode. Um, and they both actually now uh, seem to be able to run at uh, 200 milliamps. 
Um, we expect a total of uh, 28 to uh, 34 beam lines uh, in the first phase of the uh, build up of Petra 4. We will actually build 26 beam lines and the extreme condition and large volume press um, follow up uh, will be one of these beam lines built in the first phase. Okay, with this, I like to um, summarize. So the future for extreme condition research uh, in the diamond anvil cell at Petra 4 is very bright. Um, we will re have real multi-megabar X-ray diffraction, both powder and single crystal using cluing submicron beams uh, combined with imaging and X-ray. Combining imaging and X-ray diffraction will enable the study of hierarchical structures in space and employing the pink beam, which I didn't have much time to talk about, will uh, enabling the hierarchical structure in time. So we, we have a proposal for the new extreme condition time resolved XRD and imaging microscope, which we call extreme at Petra 3. And that will actually be the ultimate microscope in four dimensions, which spans six orders of magnitude in time and special resolution. And if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, please join us for the Petra 4 Beamline Portfolio user workshop that will take place at the end of uh, September. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and uh, put up my acknowledgement slide, Beamline scientists, uh, sample environment, our collaborators, and then also a very large group of people that actually helped to uh, develop the case for um, the new uh, extreme uh, Beamline. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, so Petra 4 sounds very exciting. Too bad that it's only in 2027. It's quite a long time oh. to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, is there any questions for, for Peter? We have the time for, for a few. Uh, Vitali, go ahead, please. Um. You mentioned about coherence. You're considering only imaging. Uh, what about the, uh, uh, based on the diffraction and correlation spectroscopy? Yes, so we're also doing, um, we also have a project um, that we've been working on um, coherent diffraction imaging, um, but that is still in the infancies. Um, it's, it's really difficult to do this uh, type of experiments at Petra uh, at Petra 3, especially, I mean, it's not nearly impossible at uh, at the extreme condition beam line, we actually have to go to a different beam line, the coherent diffraction beam line. Uh, but then we're at lower energies and this causes all sorts of uh, issues. But we know we can do it. Uh, Konstantin has actually a publication where he sees speckle patterns um, to um, when he goes uh, looking at MGFEO. Okay, thanks. I think we have another uh, question by uh, Ninad. Yep. Um, yeah, nice to see you, Peter. It's been Hi, Ninad. Yeah, so just a quick question is, uh, so your beam time, all of the beam time now is generally uh, user type or, or do you have a partner group or? No, I mean, 80% uh, of the beam time goes to the users. Uh, we have two long-term proposals that um, take up some, uh, some of the beam time and we, uh, we reserve 20% uh, for commissioning and uh, in-house research. But by, I mean, 80% of the beam time is going to, uh, to the users. And in fact, tomorrow we have uh, our, uh, our uh, deadline for uh, beam time proposal submission, which Dominic is uh, snogging because he, uh, I saw you already submitted proposals. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, that's all the, the time we have for, for questions. Thanks, thanks again, uh, Peter.